what I was doing any longer. So I dropped out of that whole business of lecturing and writing and so on and so forth. Found this little place over here in the Blue Ridge where I would be left alone and could meditate to my heart's content and garden. And that's what I did. And suddenly one afternoon here, Karen had gone out and, and to the mailbox, which was down at Hunter Moyer's farm, and brought me back a book sent by one of my readers of an earlier book. And that book was by this Baba Muktananda, and the title was The Play of Consciousness. Well, that rang a bell because that very issue had given me the, one of the biggest mystical experiences I'd ever had that had brought about my leaving that whole world and coming here. <laughs> and here was this, and I suddenly realized this was the character that Nancy Brown, my seminar director, had tried to get me to go. And here I was getting away from that, and it followed me to, <laughs> uh, to my place here in the Blue Ridge. And so uh, I said, I'll look at it later. And uh, I, I did that night. And I had, from opening that book and reading the first couple of lines in it, I had the big maha. I mean, it just blew me right out of this world. And all this stuff went on. And finally, I ended up back where I started from, sitting there in my living room. And I said to my wife, Karen, I said, Wherever this character is, <coughs> pack your bags, because we're going there. And of course, we ended up 10 years, 10 winters and two summers in his ashram in India, back here often enough to check in <laughs> and see whose house, that they hadn't burned down the house yet, uh, and so on. So it had quite a, quite a history behind it with this, this chap, Mukananda. Now, my first meeting with him, he started in immediately, without any warning from me at all. He had to speak only through an interpreter. He started in immediately talking about the heart. And he shared with me the work of one Abhinava Gupta, and I can even spell it if you want to see it. Abhinava Gupta, in the t about the 10th century in Kashmir, India, the head honcho of a whole group of meditating sages who meditated on the heart all the time and then got together in their groups. And they mapped out, plotted out the whole action of the heart in human experience. And that's what this strange character from India shared with me in our first meeting we ever had. Uh, that meeting ended with him handing me a copy of this Abhinava Gupta's Kashmir Shaivism, which put me to sleep immediately. I never got past the first paragraph, the most boring, dull, turgid, uh, logical stuff I'd ever come across. Uh, at any rate, it all had to do with the heart. And here's what my teacher had said. He said in the what he called the cave of the heart was the creative power behind the whole universe. He said the, the ancient people in Kashmir call it Shiva, S-H-I-V-A. They, they called themselves Shaivites who followed this, the directives of the heart wherein Shiva lived. And they said there in the cave of the heart lies the source of the whole universal process and said from that non-moving and they didn't they weren't they didn't really mean a cave in the heart it was just a reference point sort of like today you hear all this stuff about zero point it's very popular in new age circuits the zero point i don't think they know any more about it who are using the word than i do and i don't know what it means um, i do know david bone how many of you are familiar with David Bohm? Believe me, one of the greats of the 20th century. He was um, a physicist professor at Princeton and got expelled by the McCarthy people and actually put on a boat and 
with a man without a country, no citizenship papers. The University of London immediately brought him in to Birkbeck College as their one of their, their great physicists because he was a protege of Einstein's and he worked with him there at Princeton. Well, David, David Bohm uh, uh, had, had um, talked about this whole issue of the fields of energy in which we live. And he had spelled this all out in some marvelous new metaphors. And uh, I'm trying to think how, how to tie this in without going all day on this. But the whole issue was that within the heart, oh, David Bohm talked about this. And this will remind you of the physicist you brought the other day. David Bohm talked about a single cubic centimeter of empty space. He said if you could really get it emptied of all traces of matter, a single cubic centimeter, it's not much, you know, it's pretty small, a single cubic centimeter of truly empty space contains about 10 to the 38th power energy units, or ergs, or hertz value, if you want to say it, 10 to the 38th power ergs, more energy than we can compute from the whole universe, contained within one single empty centimeter of pure empty space. And now that was in his 1957 book, Causality and Chance in Modern Physics, which had him up for the Nobel Prize, and he got shot down because of the McCarthy people <laughs> in this country <laughs> having thrown him out. Uh, uh, um, and he was born in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, uh, two immigrant furniture dealers and uh, parents in Wilkes-Barre, educated at the University of Pennsylvania and so forth, tried and blew American as you can get, but he wouldn't sign the affidavit that he had never been opposed to the United States and, and belonged to any foreign things like communism and so on. He said, this is an affront to the whole physics profession that you would ask us to sign such a thing as that. And he said, it should be obvious to you that we're not uh, terrorists or whatever they called them back then. He refused to sign. They took away his citizenship papers, literally threw him on a boat and said, don't come back. And the University of London then picked him up. But um, David Bohm had all this figured out. And this business of his, of a single em empty centimeter, that is simply, a, it has no locus. <laughs> You couldn't locate it because to locate it, you had to bring in the whole business of, of the cause effect of matter and so on and so forth. Well, the same thing with this locus of the whole creative process in the cavity or cave of the heart. It's just a reference point. But the ancient Shavite said from that point, that point sends out wave forms. And when my teacher over in India it started talking about these waveforms. He, he made this, wave-like shapes of these waveforms that are coming out from the heart that contain within them the potentials of everything conceivable in, in creation itself. And that these they called the Shakti, which is the feminine form of Shiva. So Shiva was the male form that never moved, but sent out this energy which was Shakti, the female energy, which created the universe by dancing around Shiva in these wave fields. And he would again wave fields dancing around Shiva and creating the whole universe for Shiva to witness. And so without the Shakti, creating, there was nothing, there was no creator. Without the Shiva, 
generating the Shakti, 